Right, G'day guys, thanks for stopping by, welcome to this weekend's video. Uh, a little background on this week's uh, video, a little bit of the mo motivation behind it, uh, if I will. Um, I went camping last weekend, uh, took the dog, and normally when I go away, uh, I take the dog away, albeit that we're only gone for the night. Now I'd normally have a couple of these sort of Pepsi bottles, Coke bottles, two litres, whatever, uh, in the car somewhere. Normally either in the fridge or just floating around for the dog, uh, if he needs water, or if, uh, you know, been doing a little bit of effort and uh, require a quick drink of water myself. Uh, but when we were out on the weekend and doing a bit of camping, um, I'd only had the one in the car and the other one was empty unfortunately, so it was quite warm and the dog all but ran out of water. I was lucky that I just happened to have a couple of small you know, 300 ml bottles in there and that was enough to get him through. But I've come to the realisation that uh, I need to put some more water in the car. Uh, if I'm going to be doing some solo stuff where I'm not taking the caravan, um, I need some way to carry water. I'm not a big water drinker, I normally just drink my Pepsi um, and that usually covers me, but for the purpose of taking the dog with me, he needs a bit more water uh, and on a filthy hot day when we've been doing a bit of hiking or something like that, um, is rat shit and I, you know, I can't be giving him Pepsi or anything like that as much as he'd probably drink it. So I need some way to start carrying some additional water in the car. If I go for any decent length, I normally take one of these. This is a, a 15 litre. Uh, just a little you know, water drum that you'll get from Bunnings. I think those are about 10, 12 bucks or something like that. So I normally take that with me as well, uh, specifically if I'm taking the dog. Obviously if I'm in the caravan which is behind the camera over here, I don't, I don't need to worry about that because I've got an 80 litre tank uh, underneath the caravan. Uh, but for the purpose of just going, you know, if I'm doing forward driving or something along those lines, uh, or I'm camping, I really want to have some sort of backup water that I can rely on or a store of water somewhere that's not intrusive, it can be left full, and then I've always got water. Worst case scenario, something happens, I've got water to, you know, I can just straight away lay hands onto. Uh, and you'll see there, that's basically the camper build. Uh, we've got the fridge over there. Uh, this is the mattress, and this is on the storage box underneath there. So pretty much that whole back is taken up. I want to throw that water drum in there. Uh, this starts taking out space. That thing slides around. I need to strap it down if I want to carry some fuel, some extra diesel, or if I want to throw some firewood in there. That area fills up very quickly. Under here, I've got the tools, I've got some recovery gear, uh, I've got the auxiliary battery, and that's pretty much, and the air compressor. So that under storage area is pretty much full. And luckily, this turned up on Gumtree. Uh, now this is a 35 litre water tank. Now because I'm sure somebody is going to ask, uh, just give you some quick measurements on this. So it's uh, 110 high. Say 85 wide. Mm, call that about six and a half, 65 mil. Uh, keep in mind that you would also have to consider that you've got that cap on the other end there as well. And as you can see, that is flat. Uh, so there is a possibility that I could probably stick that inside and put it under the bed or mount it to the floor inside the bed or something along those lines. Uh, but we don't want to do that. What I'm looking at doing is sticking it up there on the roof. As per the video link, you'll see just up the top there, we've got two solar panels now up on that roof. This is what it looks like from the top. So we've pretty much lost the use of this roof rack. Uh, but with these two solar panels up here, we've got about 240 watts uh, on top. We've got all this space under here uh, that can be utilised for the tank. Now luckily enough, I have measured it up and it will either fit lengthways or it will fit acrossways. Now I did struggle with how to mount it up here. You can see uh, with my solar panels, this is the type of construction I've got. Um, and we're going to use some more of these, these turnbuckles. Uh, they just hook on to the roof rack and then I've got them looped through and uh, screwed on the bottom there so I can tighten them up, loosen them up. If it needs to come off, I can just undo those, unplug the Anderson plug over here and then remove the panels and then I've got the use of the roof rack back if I need it. But what we need to do now is just lift these solar panels up. Probably gonna need to do some rerouting of some wires there to make this work, uh, but I really wanna have that in the middle uh, so that's gonna balance the weight out. Now on the side you can see there's five screw holes that go down the side and they do have uh, I guess a metal insert uh, or a nut of some description and what I can do uh, is just take five eighths and then that'll screw in. Uh, now they can only go in so far so I do need to be careful here so what we're going to do is I made sure to grab some nuts for these and we're just going to shorten that up and it'll almost become like a lock nut once we screw it in. So I can tighten that up like that 
get it to the point and then we'll just lock that nut off so it doesn't go any further into there. And then what we've got is just these six mil turn buckles. As per you saw with the roof racks and how I'm using the turn buckles to do that, we're gonna do the same here. Fit through the turn buckle like that. Again, we'll put that nut on there. Because I don't want this uh, becoming like a lever in the side. I would prefer it be flush up against those turn buckles are just going to be hooked down and they'll just lock onto the cage of the roof rack. Now I did have some split washers that I grabbed uh, for the purpose of doing this job. Uh, what I'm going to do is just throw a couple on the end there. I've got a, a you know, packet full of them so throw a couple of split washers on the end. That'll keep the turn buckle in closer to this nut which in turn is going to be closer to the tank itself. Uh, and then one on the end which we're going to use to make sure that that tightens up. Uh, and then that's just going to give us just a little bit of thread on the end uh, which hopefully won't puncture the tank. Uh, and then that should work well. I'm going to end up with something that looks closer to that. Uh, now of course I could go and just shorten these bolts up. Uh, but I think that's going to work just as well. And that still allows us to rotate the turnbuckle to tighten up once we need to attach it to the roof. But it is going to keep that a little bit closer to that actual bolt there and closer to the, the body of the tank itself, which is what we want. Now, looking at what the previous owner has done to this tank, what I think he was going for was having this one just being gravity fed. Uh, so being able to open that up and then open this hose up and then obviously it would be gravity fed or if there was a requirement, he could put it under pressure. Close this tap off here, which will stop the gravity feed. Open this one here, and then that's gonna take the water out through this pump. Fortunately, this pump is not a self-primer. It's a great, nice, quiet little pump. Really like it. But it's 280 gallons per hour. Uh, I don't know what, what that works out liters per minute, but it's a lot. But it just pumps out too much water for this 35 liters. Uh, and the fact that it's not self-priming, uh, there's no real use for this for me. Um, I don't need that sort of pressure. And another challenge with this is that this is your fill port here. It does have a little breather on top, albeit not good enough. Um, so the challenge was if we wanted to lay it this way and have this section angled downwards so we could do a gravity, gravity feed, the problem is that the fill port is also down this end. So if you tried to fill it with the other end up, uh, you're only going to be able to fill to about here before this starts flowing back out. This is going to be where the water is going to come out. This is going to be my low point. I am going to elevate it on the, this side, which is where the fill is going to be. Uh, so that'll be elevated at that point. Uh, and then that way, when I fill it up, it's going to fill from this side up to this side. I'll be able to fill it up. This will be the high point. So when there's air needs to come out or if I need to crack that, to allow water to come out of this corner, that's not going to be a problem. I am going to leave this on with a hose, um, and what I'm probably going to do is turn that up 90 degrees, and this will become my breather. If I'm taking water out of the other side, I can just crack the tap. Um, this section will be higher than the where you fill it up, and will effectively become the highest point and allow the water to throw, flow through the system. I'm going to leave the barb on here as well, so if I need to fill this under pressure, I'm just going to be able to connect a hose up to that and then fill her up rather than having to take this off. I'm going to swap this out for black line. Now, the problem you've got when you use clear line uh, in a water system like this, especially if it's going to be exposed to sunlight, or pretty much any light, um, but to certainly direct sunlight makes it easier, all your algae and stuff is going to grow in here. Um, it ends up being nice and moist, it gets warm, and it's getting sunlight, which is everything it needs to grow. Just gonna swap out this for some black irrigation stuff that I've got there, uh, and that'll stop the sunlight getting in, uh, which stops that algae from growing inside. And apparently the original owner had a leak around this area somewhere, which he's tried to tidy up, so hopefully that doesn't become an issue for us again. I have realized I've lent my roll of uh, irrigation conduit that I was gonna use for this. Uh, so if you see the clear pipe, just so we can make it, uh, I guess fit the purpose so we know what we're doing, get it designed, and then eventually I'll just cut this out and um, put the proper black stuff in. What we're actually gonna do is mount this to the rear of the vehicle. Tim was here from uh, the MQ video. Uh, that we did on the Triton, uh, again, link up the top and down in the description. My concern if I put this facing the rear was that the Foxwing awning was going to be covering it up and, and give me some issues and um, I'd have to, you know, be mucking around with that. 
Uh, but he did make a good point that I could just put an extension hose on this and run that uh, out wherever I want. So uh, we're going to swing this around and face it out the back uh, because there was some mounting issues uh, if I had this across ways, like you see there. I wasn't able to get the turnbuckles that I've got on the solar panels uh, to still come down and attach to the roof rack. So, uh, or the cage. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn this sideways. Uh, this is going to go towards the rear, give it pretty much full coverage from the solar panels on the top, so that'll keep it nice and cool. Um, it'll be central to the cage itself uh, from a left to right perspective, albeit that it will be towards the back. It'll be easier to stand up here like I am now. It's on the back uh, with that back door open. It's easy enough just to, to, to stand up here like this and uh, I can reach up onto the roof rack, fill it, do whatever I need to do. As far as wiring goes, I'm going to have to shift the earth screw uh, that I've got running to the, or the ground screw that I've got for this rear panel. Cable is just getting in the way. Uh, it's just not going to allow me to move this as far back as I want. Grounded, baby, grounded. Okay, so there she is mounted up there. We're reasonably happy with that. I don't think I need quite that slope, uh, but that's going to do for now. You can see this corner is now my highest point, which is obviously the fill point, and it is going to be where the breather is going to be. I'm just going to run a hose up out of here. It's just got a little bit of a rise going up to that corner, and this is going to be the side that we're going to be taking the water from. The bucket, turn buckles there, and on that side. And I have made sure that the turnbuckles are going opposite to each other, so they're applying pressure against each other. Um, and you'll see that's rock solid, that's not going anywhere. Um, but we will take it for some local tests just to make sure. We don't want this coming out anywhere, but the good news is, even if it comes loose, not that we want it to, but it's not going to come out from under the solar panels because they're going to be uh, mounted back on and braced down and then it won't fit out any of these holes around the cage itself. So at worst comes to worst, if all of those turnbuckles broke and it shifted loose, it's not coming out over the top of the solar panels and it's certainly not gonna come out any of those edges of the roof cage, so it is gonna stay in there. Uh, so I guess we can call that a bit of a redundancy in our safety there. Our tap over here is working and is the lowest point, so let's open that up and see what happens. Nothing. I think we're a little bit higher at the back here than we are at the front, so I've got a feeling that all of our water has gone up the front. So we'll top this up a bit more. That's our filler hole, and the water that spilled out went forward. At least it went to the towards the passenger side, but it went forward into the passenger side. Um, so what I've done, I've just undone our top tap, our breather tap, we'll figure out something to do with that later on to make that a little bit tidier. Uh, you can see we've still got a bubble here, we've actually got a leak so I do need to tighten this up. Um, so we've got a little bit of a leak there, and a little bit of a leak down at this tap, So, uh, but we'll worry about that later. Uh, and if we just open that tap up, get a nice flow of water there. So this is at the side of the vehicle. This will actually be under the awning, which is good news. So that'll just be coming out here under the awning. Uh, so if I'm under the awning, it's raining, whatever, and I need to get access to water, I can just reach up, step back, uh, just reach up, and uh, open that tap. Got a nice flow of water there. Ideal. The hands are wash. And that's it guys, so that's the addition of the 35 litre water tank to the top of the Pajero. Probably going to go through a few modifications between now and when I'm happy with it. I don't know about you, but that'll do me for today. Thanks very much for stopping by. Um, I'm going to go and grab a drink. I'll sit out at the front and we'll look at this beautiful sky. Cheers guys, we'll catch you on the next one.